What's up, everybody? We're Welcome down back. to episode three of Tricky Talk, and what we've we got for today's lovely subject. So, today's lovely subject is it's called "It's Still a Card Trick." Where does that go? Where do we go with that? <laughs> Similar, uh, big break in it. It's only big. a game show. I've never seen that game show. Oh, you're you're a bit young, aren't you? <laughs> I'm younger than you, I think. I'm younger than you. I know how to look it, but I am a bit. Um, you know, with John Burgo on that the the pool game used to be on TV. Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> I really don't know. Way before you, I really don't know. Uh, yeah, so the idea that came from this talk is um, from a magic convention that I went to once, and we were all in a hotel. This is just the backstory. So, we had me and a few other big name magicians stood about with a couple of friends, and this wedding party came down. And you had the the likes of these magicians showing them tricks, card tricks, and um, and these are like well respected. Yeah, yeah, well respected magicians. magicians and stuff like that. Um, and they they did, they were doing all these card tricks and there were all various card tricks but at the end of the day it was they were picking a card and they were finding the card in, in various ways and then um, there was another thing where it was still a card trick but it did something else to the deck and it was Leviosa mm. um, anyway so they were blown away they were screaming and they were loving it and then we were just about to leave and then one of the guys from the wedding party wrecked he was he said to me oh are you a magician as well I said yeah yeah because I didn't really do anything in there mm. and he said are you a magician as well I said yeah yeah he said oh, can, you, can you show me something I went yeah yeah so I thought well I'm, I'm known for doing a, a little paddle trick mm. um, so I have a really good script for that so I, I did the thing and he just went that is the best thing I have ever saw and I went you, do you know who they were in there? Do you know who them like magicians were? Obviously, they don't know who the magicians were, but I said, like, mm. they are some of the world's best card manipulators, the card magicians, you know, the best minds in magic in there. And he goes, yeah, but it's just a card trick, isn't it? <laughs> and it made me think of this subject, thinking, yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just a card trick to you. And, you know, to, to magicians... Them card tricks are phenomenal. Mm. Like it fools us every single time. But to a layman, you you tell them to pick a card. No matter what you do, at the at the end of it, you're going to produce their card, right? Yeah. And so in my set, when I when I perform at weddings and stuff like that, the first thing I always say to people is, "Anyone seen a magician before? Yeah. And what what have you seen? Who have you seen?" And they'll always say, like, the Dynamo on TV, David Blaine, mm. stuff like that. And I'll say, all right, but if you have you for, saw... for my next trick, I'm going to walk on water, just like Dynamo. <laughs> yeah, no card tricks anymore. I'm going to walk on water now. I'll walk up a building. <laughs> I'll levitate about a thousand feet in the air. Uh, but no, uh, when I say, like, have you seen a magician before? It's often like, yeah, I've seen one at a wedding. I had one at my wedding. Mm -hmm. And I go, yeah, yeah, what, what, what did they do? They go, oh, well, they've got a deck of cards out and they asked me to pick a card. And I go, yeah. <laughs> They got you to pick a card, so I, then I go into like, well, say I, every magician does that. So I like to do something a little bit different, and I, I like do a card trick. But my card trick isn't about them picking a card. It's about, um, it's very similar to the number trick that Chris mm -hmm. Ramsey does with the tattoo. Yeah. Um, so I do that because at the end of the day, it is a card trick, but it's completely different because I still want to do card tricks, mm -hmm. but I don't want to just be because it does. It doesn't get you get you remembered. It doesn't like. I don't know, you, you, they don't go to their friends and go, oh, this guy we had at the, at the wedding, he was absolutely amazing. He made, he picked a card and he found it. Like, that's not something that you get remembered for. You get, yeah. I'll be honest, you get remembered for a lot for drawing a cross on people's <laughs> hands, which you, you'll know if you're a magician. But um, yeah, it all, it all stemmed from from that sort of uh, night that, that all happened. So now, as I say, I do, I do ask at every table that I go to, have you ever seen a magician before? What have they done? And honestly, nine out of 10 of them, say oh well yeah they did a card trick they made me pick a card so it's the same as like I don't know how many times you've heard this but if you are performing somewhere and if you don't say that first you pull out a deck of cards how many times do they say I've seen that one yeah do you get that quite often all the time or, or I know that one or I've seen yeah. that one but you don't, they don't know what you're going to do you could but they sort of think it's just a card trick so mm -hmm. I've probably seen that one don't know. Picked a card, signed it, lost it, come back. Yeah. 
there's a number of ways you could do that but as far as they're concerned it's yeah. just a card trick this isn't like a talk to say don't do card tricks because at the end of the day everyone loves a card trick and I, even when I'm in the nightclubs and doing the magic in there you know I've, I've done I talk about this oh what have you seen the magician before they just do card tricks and they go mm. oh yeah but I love that one so <laughs> I, I still do it um because some people just want to pick a card some people just think they, they're more involved when they're picking mm-hmm. the card which obviously you're, you are anyway but the thing that I find interesting is the way people remember things that happen yeah so for example there's um, I think I was talking to Andy Larmouth about something and it's the spectator perceives they remember the trick as they chose a card it was signed the deck was thrown on the ceiling and their signed card was stuck on the ceiling uh-huh. But they have another uh, other things in that thinking it happened in the trick, which has evolved from other tricks that were performed. Yeah, and they think I something that as well amazing has happened. Yeah, it, it's like uh, oh, but he did this card trick and he picked a card, but then he levitated ten feet off the air, <laughs> uh, off the floor, and then, and then, it, then the then card went through the window, and that was my card there. Yeah, and it's like I've, I've heard them stories before and stuff like that because it, it gradually gets better and better. You know, yeah, David Blaine levitated on TV two feet <laughs> off the air. And then he did it again, you know. Someone tells that same story. Oh, he levitated four feet off the air. Yeah. And then someone else tells the story. He levitated ten <laughs> feet off the floor. You know, stuff like that. I think it's uh, to get that card trick something other than just a card trick is to try and add different elements, mm-hmm. like yeah. Omni deck. Yeah. So that at the end of my routine, I always do an Omni deck, and I but I use um, the thing that I've already previously said. I said. The everyone does a card trick, and I said I don't normally do a lot of card tricks because well every magician does them and it's a bit too cliche. And then I go into the reason the reason that I don't do them is that I'm pretty bad at them. That's why it's always my last <laughs> trick. So I do the the Omni deck thing where um, I get the card wrong at first, then I mm. end up pulling their other card out and then make it disappear. And I said like and they know it's behind my hand or whatever. Yeah. And then they go. Um, they go, it's just behind your hand. I say, well, what if I could do one better than that? Mm. Instead of making one card vanish, what if I made the whole deck vanish? Yeah. So then it's still a card trick, but that's just a big killer. Yeah. That, so I do that. But that's the only time in my routine that I'll get ever ever get someone to pick a card. Yeah. So think of it what you will. Like At the end of the day, every card trick is just a card trick. You're going to get the, the spectator's card, mm. but it's how you perform it I suppose and it's it's probably better for magicians you know as I said that those card tricks that they were performing to the to the people at the wedding they were phenomenal to me I'm like what the hell is going on here that is brilliant like how has he got how has he got that card how does he know that's their card well, I suppose from our point of view it's like we know different slights and moves and mm. how things are done and then when it's not done in that in that way, way it fills us it, yeah it fills us but to to a layman you know whether you did a slight in front of them, or you did genuine real real magic. Like they, they're um, not going to know. We said on the previous one, like a stripper deck. Yeah. So a spectator pick a card, the cards put in the deck. There you go. There's your card. Yeah. As easy as that. Or you could do some move monkey thing of like classic pass, whatever else. Yeah. And get the card. It's still the same. Effect. It's still the same effect. Yeah. yeah. But maybe using a stripper deck to a magician. Who wouldn't think another magician would use a stripper deck on them? They'd, they'd go, "Oh, how the hell do you do that?" And to a magician, that's brilliant because you haven't done any moves yeah. well that they can see, and then you end up using a trick deck. So mm-hmm. we're more fooled by the methods, I think, yeah. rather than the trick itself. Mm-hmm. Because to a layman, all you're doing is getting their card. They don't know how you're doing it, but we know methods of how they're doing it, and we're fooled more by the method that's made it happen. If you know yeah. what I mean. It's like different things like, um, do you know Monkey in the Middle? Yeah. So you get the two Jokers and then there's a card lost in the deck and mm-hmm. that card comes in between the Jokers. It's like a standard sandwich trick, but it's like, I love that. Yeah. Just the way you sort of lose the card, do it in that way. That's another card trick, but yeah, yeah. it's a different way to produce the card. Yeah, yeah. Do you think a lot of people, well, I don't know, like your wife's not a magician or anything like that, but is she... Do you ever sick of card tricks? Sometimes, yeah. Because really, it's not just it's not just picking a card. Like a lot of the things on the market, um, whether it be we talked about Craig Petty's 
mm-hmm. new trick. What was it called again? Mind Block. blocks. Mind blocks. Um, I know that's not necessarily a, a card trick with a pack of cards, but at the end of the day, it's still a card trick. Yeah. Using different things is uh, is your wife when she saw that was she a bit like sick? Oh, it's just a card trick, or was she? No, because it she was loved it. not using playing cards. Yeah. So. Yeah, I suppose that can change it up, can't it? Because the same with like the um, saying with the Cube Fifty Two, when I did the the video tutorials for that with Craig, is using standard things like you can do out of this world, mm-hmm. but they are just coloured cards mm-hmm. that look like they use for Ruby Skews, but you can still use the card tricks. But because it's not a playing card, mm-hmm. it's something completely different for people. Yeah, I suppose you're right because. Do you know now I think back to my set that I do, I do the Chris Ramsey nine card thing that he did Mm -hmm. um, with the tattoo, and then I go into my paddle thing, so that's something completely different altogether. And then I end up going into, um, um, well, I do do another paddle routine with with, uh, colour changing knives, Mm -hmm. and then I go to an invisible deck. Yeah. Because, yeah, that's, in a way, that's them picking a card. Mm Mm-hmm. But you can get a lot of laughs out of it. You can talk about shuffles. You can talk that they're doing the trick. They feel like they're more involved. Yeah. So, you know what? It's not like I don't do card tricks, but because I, I do the invisible deck. Mm-hmm. Um, but that feels to me the invisible deck feels to me like it's not just a classic card trick that mm-hmm. everyone's doing. Pick a card. Pick a card. Yeah. Um, even though I am telling them to <laughs> pick a card, but I'm getting them to think of it more or less. Yeah. Um, and then I knew I do celebrity smart ass that I told you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that's really picking a card, but you're picking a a celebrity, yeah, aren't you? So I think it's like said when people come and then if they've seen a magician before, it's been like Uncle Nobed with a deck of cards doing yeah. like your twenty one card trick or whatever. Yeah, yeah. like to think that's just all you can do with it. Yeah, I suppose it well, is. I think that's where it comes from. It's like oh. It's just a card trick because there's that many card tricks out, so people have seen a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And like you said, normally it's like select a card, whatever happens in the middle, then that's the card. Do you think to a, to a layman, all the middle is just mush to them in yeah. their head because they're just waiting for that moment that that card comes back? Yeah, that's, that's all the way. It's almost like the ambitious card, it's like time after time after time after time. That's mm-hmm. like something a little bit different because, mm-hmm. like, they found me card. Oh, found, we it found it again. Oh, shit, found, it, found again. it again. Yeah. Do you know I, when I'm performing, I don't like to, like I don't like to perform an ambitious card because I don't like to let them know that I'm good with cards. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't like. I wouldn't like them to think that. How how do I say this? So I'm performing something, and then I don't want them to go. Well, obviously you're going to get my card. Look what you've just done. Do you know what I mean? Well, obviously it doesn't matter. That's what the thing. You do. The people who do magic. But do cardistry as well, mm-hmm. so they're like, "Oh, look, I can do these like shuffles, do this, this, and this." Yeah. Oh, look, I can get your card here. By Nothing against these. cardistry, like yeah, it's amazing. Like, I can't do it. No, but I, um, but it's when you see someone who's good at handling cards, mm-hmm. you think, "Oh, well, if he can do that, then yeah, then obviously easy, you're gonna it's find really easy for him to say, look, I've got this card here and control it.' Yeah, even from a layman perspective." Yeah, I think cardistry to a, a layman would be more impressive than than an actual than an trick. actual trick, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, it's still impressive to me. Like, oh yeah, watching some of them, like even things like where they get the card and flick it and then it flies around the back of the head and they catch it and it's like it's on. It has to crazy, be on thread, right? It has to be. I don't know how that works. It's it's just phenomenal. Like I can, I can barely um, flick a card up and catch it. Yeah. Do you know? And and the fact that they're flicking it around the head, I'm like, sorry, what? <laughs> But do you reckon that to them? Do you reckon then again, flicking a card around the head, doing all that? Do you reckon that's just still a card trick? Because when when Chris did Leviosa to them, mm-hmm. he then still said, "Oh well, that's just still a card trick, isn't it?" And I'm just thinking, well, it's a bit more than that. Yeah, it's like it's a thing of it's a trick using playing cards. Yeah, like yeah, I know the the card like, comes out of the deck, so yeah. there's your card. Mm-hmm. But there's that whole. Whole thing of it <laughs> flying as well. Like, did you miss that? Do you know what I mean? That's like real, real magic. That's Harry Potter stuff, right it's here. It's got to be like magnets or something. It has to be something like that, right? <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know if the guy said it just because he was wrecked or something. But he's just like, that's the best thing I've seen. I'm like, are you serious? Like this little thing? It's the best thing you've seen. But then from that, it's trying to think of 
other things that you can do if you want to perform like uh, magic with apps yeah so it's something to do in between card tricks or incorporate with card tricks yeah that's I mean take it as you will but I wouldn't this is my, my sort of suggestion don't just do card tricks in your uh, set because what I've just said is it, it's just a card trick whether you you, you know you sell them but pick a card first of all then later on you do Omni Deck then you do an ambitious card you know mm. you're just finding people's cards over and over and over again there is so much more out there that you can put in your sets yeah um, you've got the likes of Double Cross you've got the likes of the, the paddle thing that I do mm. you've got loads of apps um, that you can use and stuff like that you need to put some of them in there because really back to thinking of it like Invisible Deck to me is basically just picking a card yeah. and I perform that and I also get people to pick a card in my routine mm -hmm. so I do need to separate them and make them totally different yeah like we said on the first one <coughs> I had that um, Seven of Hearts in the back of my phone mm. obviously you've got a new phone case now with showcase and stuff so I can't do that I could have that card in there to produce or I could have any random one mm -hmm. but it's you could use your mentalism stuff to get a playing card forced yeah rather than getting them to pick a card you can force a playing card and then reveal that yeah how many other tricks can you think of that just don't use cards at all like at all there's not not, not a single card used whether it be a playing card or something else I don't know like a lot of them is mentalism but then mm. you're using billets and stuff to write down so would you class that as yeah maybe something completely different the only things I can think of right now is the ones that I use in my routine so like double cross that has nothing to do with a playing card the paddle thing yeah. nothing to do with the playing card you got yeah, I don't know what else the outcomes do. of like digital force bag yeah so things on their phone, guessing a password on the phone, that's mm. something else that I do. I can only go off experience of what I actually do. But you know I never use wiki test, but yeah. most people rave about that. Yeah. And then I've got AnyWeb which uses a spectator's phone, so you don't use any playing cards at mm -hmm. all. But then book test. that's all like There's one book test, they don't use playing cards. Mm. Um I don't know. It's illusions, but that's something, <laughs> that's something different, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know anything else. I mean, leave some suggestions. Yeah. And then let us if there's know. anything that you perform or enjoy that doesn't use playing cards, then mm -hmm. if you watch it on YouTube, leave it in the comments. If you're on the uh, the podcasts, then... Then find us on head YouTube. Over YouTube <laughs> head over to YouTube and find <laughs> us on there and leave comments. Yeah, it's... Trying to have stuff, like we're saying, in your everyday carry, possibly, of things that you can yeah. include with the card tricks, either to emphasize them or would you argue that every magician different? would say oh well a deck of cards is an everyday carry well that's a, a massive to a debate, magician isn't it yeah to a magician they are but I, I'd say an everyday carry is more like what have you got on you now like if you were just going to the shops if you weren't mm. a magician what have you got on you now that a magician would also have on them yeah so their phone you know keys keys a pen mm. do you know there's so many like Maybe key master you could yeah. have that on your keys. You've got you've got keys as well. If mm -hmm. as not a magician, but you've also got a set of keys. You could add a trick to your keys, and yeah. that would now become an everyday carry. So, and that's not a card trick. Then there's like I don't think you get a lot of everyday carries that are a card trick. Mm. There's like the blister effect. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Which but then again, got a playing card. Yeah, <laughs> and again, you're revealing but a playing you, card. You could have. I don't know. You could develop it to be anything. You could, yeah. You could do um, because that's what I've been thinking about. Because I want a ESP stuff. Obviously, with the three D printers to like print something up to reveal something which isn't a mm -hmm. playing card, so you can have it anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So, what else is an everyday carry? I mean, I suppose you could include like a packet trick for a magician would be an everyday carry, but then again, they're more they are playing cards. But something if. <laughs> Like, I don't carry a wallet. Do you? Yeah. So it's something that could fit in your wallet, like pack of tricks and mm. that sort of thing. That is everyday carries. I think carries. if I go out, I wouldn't carry a deck of cards with us. No. I've got a deck of cards in the car and then, like, in an everyday carry bag. Mm -hmm. But I only have that everyday carry bag if I know I'm going to go somewhere and possibly perform. Yeah. So I've got something there. I think the best everyday carry that a magician has is their phone. Yeah. Because you can do so much on that. 
um, obviously digital force bag wiki test every, like all the apps um, and a lot of them you don't even need your own phone you can use someone else's yeah which is it's the, the best ever to carry yeah. isn't it because you're not even carrying anything mm. but like yeah there's like ring flight <laughs> as well ring flight yeah you could add that to your keys mm. there's so much stuff and then they're not card tricks and if you go out everyday carry with that stuff um, you could go to a gig with just that stuff yeah and you know, they, I I believe this stuff will get you more remembered than just doing card tricks, mm. because as I said, no one remembers you for picking a card. Everyone remembers you for putting a cross on their hand <laughs> or making the glass block appear, which again is probably a card trick and stuff like that. Or making but, the deck rise. <laughs> or making the deck rise and fly. Chuck on the ceiling and cards. Out. Everyone remembers that. Mm. That's probably the most most known card trick by layman. You know, oh, oh, what did he or do? Omni deck as well. Or Omni deck, yeah. Like, what, what did he do? Like, oh, he stuck my card to the ceiling. <laughs> Everyone remembers that for some reason. I don't do it, you know. It's something like random, isn't it? You wouldn't expect it. Yeah, it's just a bit of a shock. Yeah. I don't do it purely because I work in a lot of restaurants and the nightclub has like a really high ceiling. <laughs> and I work in a lot of restaurants and I just don't think that they'd want cards stuck to the ceiling. And especially weddings. I, I suppose you could ask. But yeah, to be you'd, fair, you'd have to, wouldn't there's, you? A lot of wedding venues, I go when I'm doing the photo and video, there's like random cards on the ceiling. Really? Like I noticed But they never got down? Must have been the end of last year at Bowburn Hall. Right. There was like, a, I think it was a ten of hearts or something on the ceiling. <laughs> was it signed? Yeah. Was it? How high is the ceiling though? Because these halls, they're Probably massive. Probably like a little bit taller than this ceiling. So right. maybe he's, I don't know, even 20 foot maximum. Yeah. He must be launching it wildly. Yeah. But just like do it on the outside so the cards are in the deck rather than mm -hmm. the individual card but then it was because I noticed it and then you could do like your digital force bag so you can say like pick a number between 1 and 52 it was that card and I was like yeah yeah like, oh. I've done, I've done like, that wow. <laughs> I've like, <laughs> previously stuck a card to the ceiling and then I went to someone I said name any card and it happened to be that one and I'm yeah. just like this is going to be good <laughs> <laughs> I have a card just set up there the whole day the whole night it's like um, I know there was some video I saw before of some magician so they were at a wedding venue and all the table sheets were white so they went around and placed cards on every placemat mm -hmm. so you had like one table because there's normally like a table of ten so you had like ace through to ten of hearts ace through to ten of diamonds on the table so they went to someone and was like name a card and said like ten of hearts and you remembered where that person was you tip water on the table and then it appears and then it goes see through and then yeah. it appears and they're like wow but then obviously if everyone else spills stuff then <laughs> <laughs> if anyone else spills stuff a whole deck so it's of things a good idea but it's a lot of setup yeah. it's a lot of setup for a, for a <laughs> trick that at the end of the day it's just a card trick <laughs> at the end of the day it is just a card trick, card trick. but yeah leave leave your thoughts with, with us to, to sort of say like do you think a card trick is just a card trick at the end of the day um I think a lot of people will disagree with us. I'm not saying that I'm right or wrong, but it's just sort of my thoughts of, you know, and how I've, what I've experienced. Mm. Just that guy saying, yeah, it's just a card trick. I suppose it's if someone's doing just card tricks. Like when I got into magic, it was with cards and card tricks, so I do mm. a lot of them. But then I think it sort of loses the element if you're doing multiple things to the same people. Mm. Like, oh, look, card lost, found. Mm. Well, also at another convention, um, the, this um, this guy was just showing me quite a lot of card tricks, and um, we, we were we were speaking about like you know how how is you how's the work going? Are you getting mm. gigs and stuff like this? And he said, oh, I'm not getting uh, I'm I've only just started out, but I'm not getting like great uh, a lot of gigs or anything like that. Mm. And I said, what what do you do at the weddings? And he said, just you know this stuff that I'm showing you and I'm just thinking this might be a bit too complex for the people that you're showing it for mm. um, as I say going back to that one where the wedding party came down one of them was you know take these cards okay now count down as many cards as you want then remember that card now cut the deck now just telling someone that's had a drink to <laughs> do all of that I just think sometimes it's hard enough people to remember what card to pick yeah let alone yeah let, let alone like just doing, a, doing everything any, any and then also remembering it on top yeah yeah just 
I'm not. I'm. I'm just saying those tricks are probably better for magicians. Um, but the, going back to the guy that was saying he doesn't have a great deal of weddings, I'm thinking do something. Well, that, that's another idea for another podcast. Um, doing something to to get the gigs and being remembered. Honestly, only from my experience. It's not like don't don't do what I say, but <laughs> it's just from experience. But yeah, I'm, I'm thinking like, yeah, it's good. It's good. But I was even a bit bored and a bit lost. And obviously, mm. I kind of felt like I had to watch. I was watching it, and I was just like, mm, I'm a bit bored now. And obviously, I still remember my card. But I'm just thinking. Sometimes he goes, "Okay, remember two cards now, and we're going to find both, yeah. or they're going to meet in the middle, or something like that." And I'm thinking, this is far <laughs> too much for me to even I was remember. Of like, I want you to think of any number. So if you go like 35, one, two, three, and the deal down to 35, it's like, right, this card here, and then we're going to take it, lose it in the deck, mm. and think of any other number. This one. So this is the other card, and it's like a lot of stuff going on yeah. to try and do it whereas if you like like you said perform them for magicians amazing but for lay people it's just a card you, trick yeah it's just a card something trick. short and snappy to do we'll it rather like them, a yeah. long winded thing because yeah. people get lost off you know especially when, when it's long winded and stuff like that you know if you're at a restaurant and performing and there's like I don't know 30, 40 tables that you mm. have to get through you can't be performing these long-winded tricks. Yeah, you know as much as you might like them. Um, but the thing is, like, as if a it's job. a long-winded trick, and if you're into magic and you enjoy it and you're bored of it, yeah, what's it going to be like for other people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, if you're doing them tricks, you, tricks, you're probably not bored of them. But if you're performing a trick like that, that's going to take five or six minutes mm. just to perform the card trick. Well, you you've only got five or six minutes with each table before the food comes or something <laughs> like that, so you've got to do sweet and snappy tricks mm. at restaurants and and stuff like that because you, you've only got a limited time with the table. Yeah. So as much as you want to perform them, well, <laughs> I, I don't think performing one trick at a table is. Cause I always perform a little set, you mm. know, maybe three tricks um, that last maybe eight minutes or something mm. like that before the food comes or if the food comes I just like cut it short and that's it yeah but I suppose with the restaurants as well do you have much space to work with so like if you're dealing cards down or whatever do yeah, you have well, room on the table to do that or not yeah well do you reckon those type of tricks then they may be more for a parlour show mm. or a close up show or something like that where you can have a mat set up yeah, and you know it's maybe not a restaurant trick or anything like that but <laughs> you can't go in a restaurant with a roll out mat and just like take over the table yeah right ladies and gentlemen we're going to do this <laughs> exactly exactly no I, I actually do take a little mat to the restaurant yeah. you know I take a it's like a little mat cooper no it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> say that it's, it, it's literally about maybe 20 centimetres or something like that and it's just a, one of them what they call the Bosch and Bosch or I don't know how you pronounce it but it's uh, <laughs> one of them one of them mats it's just yeah. a little Kind of, kind of table hopping mat mm. I use that and then I have an envelope to do Celebrity Smarts I just give that to someone else so yeah. I, I literally if I need a table I only mm. use that and if I'm at a, 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 for a wedding I often just use the envelope and I'm like can you be my table and then I get two people hold it so if I ever need a table I'll just use that Yeah. but uh, no I never I never really count cards out and stuff like that mm. um, I just think as I say I, my personal opinion I just think they're a bit long winded and not boring I don't want to say boring because Mm. if you make them exciting they'll be exciting but I think yeah. they're just, they're just long winded and I don't think people that are at weddings and stuff like that if, you, if you're a working <laughs> magician I don't think they're, they're great to sort of do with them and generally like people are going to have a couple of drinks by the time the yeah. magicians arrive as well yeah they are that, uh, so that's like going back to that that one about the wedding venue uh, sorry the wedding party that came down mm. you know that he was telling him to like go through the cards and pick this out and he was he was so half cut like I think he remembered the card or some people behind him remembered the card <laughs> but the guy himself I don't think he actually remembered it so it was luckily luckily yeah. we had more people behind us that said oh your, your card was the six of hearts or something he's like yeah. oh yeah it was it was I suppose that's the thing of saying like you take a look at it and show everyone else so mm -hmm. they can remember well you, there's always one person <laughs> that can't remember the, the card yeah they were like king of diamonds it's like no far off <laughs> yeah even though if you knew what the card was from the whole start you were like yeah it's still done they do the trick and their card comes to the top of the deck it's like this one's like no it's like it definitely is <laughs> it definitely was because I put it there I put it there I didn't move it I controlled it <laughs> but yeah it's still a it's still a card trick still a card trick, is still it? A card trick going back to that I suppose thinking of that other one there's that uh, another one where you put your hands together 
and then you put your middle fingers down. Right. So if you do that now, so put your hands together like so. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of and I can't a way to just those fingers, is it? Yeah, trying to way to describe it on the podcast. So yep. you put your hands like a prayer position. Yeah. Your middle fingers fold over on front of itself, and then you can pull all of your fingers apart from each other, apart from your ring finger, because it's to do with the ligaments in those two fingers are joined together, whereas all the other ones have separate. Mm. But you can do that as a, a magic trick to say to take control of them as such. Or you can do it with bride and groom because two people can do it together. And say like the thumb, if you're under the thumb, then you're together now. So you, none of this. Don't point the blame with your index finger. You, your pinky fingers, like don't be posh. Be like mm-hmm. thing with each other. And then now, obviously, your ring fingers. You're now married, so you join together forever, and you yeah. can't separate. And then that's it's a good thing. That, that's that is nice so thing. much different from a card. I've never yeah. heard that before. You're not? No, there's not much I've ever heard. I'm trying fair. to think where you'll teach me so. Much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I'd, where I'd seen that. And then I was watching. It, I was thinking, oh, that'd be great to do as like a bride and groom. Yeah, it would because you can do like you can get them to both hold their hands together, one yeah. hand each. If and you do a little bit of stage it. hypnosis, that'd be quite good on yeah. that sort of thing. You know, you do if you're doing things with the hands, you know, you could get the hands to stick, you get the hand, the fingers to come apart, and then you could do that. And I'm like, doing that with two people, that's just well, it's this one, isn't it? That's a really good sort of thing that you could do. Yeah, so if you do like your hand out, you just want to hold my hand. Yeah, I do. And, and then the finger put that down like that. So you can I do can't the lift other ones, but you can't lift your ring finger. <laughs> so when so you're doing weird. it with the bride and groom, like. It's really good because you're not you're not actually doing anything. Yeah, but they they might they probably don't know that that happens. Yeah, but I bet they get home and they're gonna go like this to uh, to each other and be like, <laughs> still can't do it. Still can't. But the do funny it. thing is, I, I did that on some YouTube shorts, and I was like, ninety nine percent of people can't do this, and there's everyone in the comments like, I did it. <laughs> it's like, unless you've had your ligament chopped, you can't do it. If you when you're doing it, if you separate your finger. Oh, yeah, so like, I, I noticed you, if you they come them. apart a little bit, then yeah, yeah, you can. But as long as it's knuckle to knuckle, knuckle to knuckle, you yeah. can't move it. Well, she maybe do that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something that isn't a card trick. Yeah, that's and you really don't good. need it like part of your everyday carry. Yeah, that's really good. You isn't have it? your two hands with you. Well, I've got a good thing to talk about. So, Darren Brown's last show, mm. he did a card trick in that um, because think about it everything that he does it's never a card trick really if you think back well, to he, what he does he did something similar with the hand thing was it you had to clasp your hands together yeah so it's and all if you could feel them coming apart or something like that it is last show um, to obviously use the suggestibility test he did all the the hand things yeah. and make them stick apart and stuff like that. He always does that. You know, hypnosis, there's something that's completely different. You know, it's a very niche thing. Yeah. Um, I went to saw a hypnosis actually the other, other week, you know, Robert Temple. Yeah. Great, great, funny show. Just in a comedy club in, in Newcastle. <laughs> Honestly, if you ever get a chance to go see Rob, go <laughs> see him. He's so funny. Um, but yeah, there's another thing that ne- never a card trick, but that's like a magic show in itself, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know how many, how many things can you think of that are like, sort of to do with the art of performing and stuff like that that isn't magic you know you've got mm. escapology but it's on our same lines yeah you've got hypnosis mm. what else do you have anything else juggling maybe jugglers Perfor- yeah performs. they've got like the um, what do you call it where you've got like the crystal ball the contact juggling contact juggling that's a good one do you say like fire eaters and stuff like that are sort of in our yeah, category of there's performance people think it's dangerous it is because it's fire and it could go wrong but mm. there's certain methods and ways to perform with it to keep it safe and to perform what you need to do yeah so like I, I can light it and eat fire and rub fire down your arms it doesn't mm. burn and stuff but it's well it's science behind it really yeah because if you have none it, of them are a card trick. if you have it hard on your arm when you're pulling it down there's no oxygen so therefore it's not going to burn is that how it works yeah uh, would you look at that couldn't do it with like a lighter, could you? Uh, possibly. You just light a stick on fire and do it with that. Yeah. All oh, right. I thought you might have had to have like special. No, like you normally use like your Kevlar and you dip it in your paraffin or your Coleman's or whatever you want to use. Mm-hmm. But you can just do. It you with do anything. a little bit of fire eating, don't you? I do. You do it now. <laughs> 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 no. 
somehow singed the beard a bit, but uh, did it? Yeah, I've singed my eyebrows. I've been messing around. There's like um, Brian Brushwood. Yeah, he's obviously he's well got a, a whole booklet and stuff on perform the fire and fire eating, mm-hmm. and he's got a whole routine that he performs using fire. So he talks about the story of how fire became and that sort of thing. At, at the time, he's like extinguishing fire with his hands, eating it, and it's really, really interesting. Do you know the one thing I've ever always been scared to do from one of the Scam School episodes was the human jack o' lantern? Yeah. Like, have you ever done it? With the tor- with Is it with the you, match? And you you light a match and you just literally put it in your mouth and it just glows. Yeah. And it's something about in constantly inhaling, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm just thinking. No way am I doing well, that. Well, the worst that will happen is you just burn yourself. And yeah, then but you it. don't burn yourself, are you? You burn the inside of your mouth. Luckily, I yeah, mean. Yeah, that's going to heal fine. Yeah, the, the mouth is apparently the, the quickest place to heal yeah. on your body. So, But I, do, I don't want to burn myself in my mouth. I mean, I burn myself enough on hot food. And it's the same thing, isn't it? I'll tell you what, one day we'll have a mess around. We'll uh, don't I'll get you to try it. Don't burn me, please. <laughs> But yeah, I'll, we'll, I'll, we'll get a fire blanket out and everything just, for, <laughs> just, just in case, case I go up in flames. <laughs> so I was messing around the other week, and well, the other month, and it was like getting bits of t-shirt okay. and turn into a like a fire wand, so you can mess around with it and eat it and put extinguish it and stuff. A fire wand. Mm-hmm. All right. So, so you're basically like making a Molotov cocktail, but with wands. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Mental. So you get these things where it's got like hollow tubes with fire, and you can mm. breathe the fumes, right? And then you can like you, spit it is out. It, is it, is it, it um, suggested that you breathe fumes? Well, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's not suggested half the stuff that we no, do. As, as long as you take precautions and have everything there, then everything's fine. We're not saying like start fiery, you know. Like if you we don't are, want, if you want are. to stick to your card tricks, you know, if you don't want to get burnt, you know, stick to the card tricks or or the magic. I suppose it's similar to magic with the fire stuff is it's better to learn from someone who already does it yeah yeah 100% you can read about it online but there's only so much yeah you know you learn from experience don't you yeah like I went to um, this this company up in Newcastle I think it's defunct now but it's called Circus Central right so I went up there and did all the the thing of it like burning points of paraffin Coleman's all these other fuels that you can use to perform a fire and the risks and stuff. Mm. So yeah, it's interesting and it's not a card trick. That isn't a card trick, you're right. But trying to perform that at venues is going to be very hard. Yeah. <laughs> Weddings it's bad enough for flash paper. Yeah. Well, I, I, isn't it um, when you're at wedding venues, no, they don't like you using flash paper. No. And I know in like public liability insurance, they don't ever cover you for stuff like that. Yeah, it's like a, a lot of the fire performers have fire performer insurance because mm-hmm. it's separate to your PLI and stuff so what so are, are we not allowed are we not allowed to use the flash paper now because I, I don't use it anyway that much I'm not sure I think mm. it would just be depending on each venue as to how sensitive the smoke alarms are yeah because if you light it in the middle of the wedding and the smoke alarm goes off and then everyone gets evacuated then <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault isn't it Do you know, I can't remember the last time I used it I mean, it must have been a long <laughs> long time ago I think the last time I used it was an Empire yeah yeah well, I know Andy uses it at Bowburn for showcases so really? I suppose if you perform magic at Bowburn then you can do it yeah that's something else that's not a card trick what fire fire <laughs> stuff yeah yeah making stuff vanish I suppose and reappearing in um, in impossible locations mm. that's not a card trick you know there's, there's so much out there that's not a card trick. Look, where the coin tricks? Yeah. How many coin magicians are? I mean, I don't do <laughs> coins myself. I don't. But coin tricks, they, they're way different from a card trick. Mm. But like, do you um, reckon they're, they're more memorable to people? Or not? I don't know. I think the stuff like at Blackpool, did you get, get smarty? Mm-hmm. That's something, it's not a card trick and quite memorable, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, Oh, this uh, magician took my wedding ring. It mm-hmm. vanished and appeared in a box of Smarties. Yeah, just it's it's an uh, item to an impossible location. But mm-hmm. I just thought, like, if you haven't got Get Smarty, I'd recommend you go and get it. It it's really good, and for the price, you actually get four gimmicks, so you can set four Smarty tubes up. Mm. And if you wanted to do it, like I only use one of them. Yeah. So I actually give two away to um, 
to someone that they said, oh, I'll give you half the money. I said, yeah, sure. Here's two. I only do it for the bride and groom um, if I do it. Was it Dan? Yeah, I gave it to Dan. Because I remember hearing the story and then yeah. I thought, yeah, because it was when we went to... Yeah, like, I'll give you half the money and I'm like, yeah, here's two of them. Mm. So I only do it once. So really, if you had four people, you could go four <laughs> way on that trip, do you know what I mean? If you were only going to do it that, but if you wanted to do it at a restaurant, yeah, you could have literally four four loaded on you mm-hmm. and you could do it over and over and over again. It's such a good such a good trick but that's not a card trick no it's not a card trick that's not a card <laughs> trick I think this is just a thought process this this whole podcast is just a thought process of what isn't a card trick now <laughs> is what isn't a card trick we're just talking about anything and everything that isn't a card trick levitating isn't a card trick walking on water isn't a card trick <laughs> but do you reckon you could do that at wedding venues uh, I could walk up a wall yeah drive people at the wall <laughs> that's yeah. a bit harder getting a car up there isn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um, you know you know what I wanted to start doing at weddings I want to start doing illusions at weddings yeah what do you think of that I think that's good dad yeah like because every like loads of magicians do shows yeah like a little half an hour show you could probably do something after the wedding breakfast yeah yeah before the night time that's what I was thinking because like that's that's when like Magicians do a little half an hour show, don't they? Forty-five mm. minutes or whatever. They'll do it between your wedding breakfast and and the night time and the night time thing. I know sometimes some of the venues have to change around the room, like if they've only got one room and you mm-hmm. can, can't be th- thinking in. But I'm sure you could have somewhere else that you could set up. Yeah, and then just do like a little show. You know, incorporate some like illusions. if someone books you for, I don't know, what what's your normal booking like an hour, two hours. Two more, two hours. Well, I do two hours, and you know more if they want. If they want to save me till the, they can have me for an hour or two in the drinks reception, and then they mm. could have me the other half an hour, up, sorry, the other hour or two in the um, turnaround period where everyone's coming, like yeah. the night guests that may have not saw the magician yeah. during the day. So, if it, like over a two-hour period that you hired to do a wedding, you could do like an hour show for people. Mm-hmm. And then an hour walk around magic. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've been thinking lately. Well, because I bought the illusions, I thought, <laughs> what can I do with these that no one's doing? I thought, no one's doing illusions at weddings. I don't even know any magicians that every magician that I know that owns the that owns illusions. Yeah. they're doing shows, yeah. which I'll, I'll be doing sort of as well. I'll be incorporating them into the shows that I do. But I'm just thinking, no one's doing them at weddings. That's something so different. Well, you know what I found good is, I don't know if you still do it or you only do it once when you were at the wedding fair. Yeah, and you did the uh, the floor. Oh, I always take that. Yeah. So, I thought that was really good because you get your sign next to it, so people yeah. take pictures and sign in the background. You know the exact way. And uh, we were at the Bullburn wedding fair, and there's a dog walker there, and it's my right. friend Steve and Kirsty, and Steve used to be doing magic. Right. They offer dog walking at wedding fairs. Yeah. All right. So, like, if you've got a dog and one's coming to the wedding, yeah, yeah, then they look after the dog, bring us so and cut, walk down the aisle. You can see it for an hour or two, get some pictures with the dog and that, and then and they'll just go look after it. Yeah. But then I found out he used to be into magic, uh-huh. and he went on holiday, and they were performing that illusion on holiday. Oh, yeah. The chair so, yeah. Yeah, so he sent us a, a video. He was like, oh, this is what you should do for the weddings and stuff. And I was like, well, actually, <laughs> <laughs> my mate Matt has got this thing, and he was at a wedding fairs, and like... I think it's just that's, I didn't know that story. that's good yeah but yeah I, I, I don't um, you know like normally they give you a little table with a white cloth and stuff like that I, yeah. I ask for that now I don't, I don't need that anymore so I go yeah. with a little tripod um, yeah. with a, a small table on top so if I do close up magic it's there and then I just mm. have these chairs set up here yeah. and then everyone goes what's that <laughs> and I well go, I'm like well it's not a car trick not a car sure trick yet. get on <laughs> jump on and then obviously I make them levitate and everyone wants to take the photos with it yeah so yeah that's why I keep it there and then obviously I am sort of in the process of writing the whole illusion show um, and getting a page to help me with it and stuff like that mm-hmm. so I am sort of offering it as like a little discounted at the minute just to trial it out Yeah. because I don't want to like just <laughs> fuck up the whole wedding I suppose it's like promising this and that and then yeah I can't promise not, it'll be the best show that you've ever seen unless I've practiced it a few times yeah. so I'll offer it a little bit cheap or maybe even free for the first one that wants to book a, I suppose an illusion show like, oh, normally you book for two hours I'll do this this and this however I'm trialling this do you want to do you want me to do it? an illusion show yeah. even if it's 10-20 minutes just to get the knack of it and then 
add more in. Mm-hmm. Could be something great for photos as well. Yeah, and you know, it's something that's so Especially different. If you get well. like the bride in a wedding dress, levitating on a chair. Yeah, absolutely. Or do you know what I've always thought? Like, how how much could I tell them? So, <laughs> if I spoke to the bride before and mm-hmm. I'm like, do you want to be involved in one of the illusions? Yeah, teach her it. Sort of, I don't know, put her in the snake girl box or yeah. the wakeling song or something. I cut her in half, <laughs> and then everyone's just like, "Oh my god!" I'd, I'd I'd love to do that. I think that's something I'm probably going to be offering in the future, just because so I don't know, no one does it. Yeah, you know? something. But it's quirky. not a card trick. Going back to it, it's not a card trick. I'm not saying don't do them, but they're not card tricks. No. <laughs> but. To do a card trick, what would you think is your favourite one? To I was perform? just going to ask you the same question. I was honestly just going to ask you the same question. Um, Leviosa. <laughs> <laughs> Probably Leviosa. I was telling friends, I want to get it, but... Honestly, know, it's, like... it's so good. It is really good. Do you know what? I'll bring it with me um, another time. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, Chris was showing us it at uh, Magic Meeting last Monday. Yeah. Is he not like, dead yet? Is the no, no. battery not dead? Well, it's funny, he had his close up case and he opened it up and we're like, are all them decks of card never yours? <laughs> he, he has two, you know. Is he? He has two in case one breaks. Do you know, I think he, one of them broke in Blackpool. Yeah. I think one of them, he let someone else have a go of it and it broke it. Did it? And I think, well, it's a good job he has two, isn't it? Yeah. It's a good job he has two. <laughs> but no, that, that honestly, that is one of the best card tricks that came out last year by far. Because to me, that, yes, I am finding your card because it's popping out the deck yeah. but just that whole rising to your hand that just takes the card trick part and throws it out the window yeah. so yes it's a card trick because you're using cards and I find your card mm-hmm. but you're not doing a card trick with it because yeah. the way that Chris performs it he doesn't he doesn't get you to pick a card he literally just says look this isn't about finding your card or anything like that and he has yeah. two cards and he says just choose one of them uh-huh. and then he puts it he puts it in and the deck obviously produces the, the card yeah. and then he just makes it fly out of his hand because he makes it not about the card trick itself but about the whole process of it rising to your hand I suppose it's like having the whole story thing it's not just like like we say with the card trick look they picked a card this this and this yeah so it, it, it's not about me finding it that's what he always says it's not about me finding the card trick the mm. card it's it's Okay, this is the closest thing he says I think you'll see to Harry Potter Yeah. and it, and it truly is so he takes a card trick and he actually removes the whole card trick aspect of it mm. so that people don't think, oh, well, he's just doing a card trick because he did something just <laughs> something completely different that you wouldn't yeah. have expected. So, that, that, you know, Leviosa is a card trick at the end of the day, but it's, it's, it is a bit more so. so that's like one a, of my favourites. It's putting in, like, an advanced haunted deck and yeah. levitation. Yeah. So doing, doing that, that would be my favourite card trick because... Yes, it's a card trick, but yes, it's so much more as well. Mm. Um, then you, for, for me, like, favourite card trick things is things with stories. Yeah. So when I first got into Magic, it was like reading the books, and then I got the, the Broway reversal. I can't remember that. Royal Road Card Magic or yeah. something like that. And it was like basically a reverse card. So I come up with a story of like, in a deck of cards, you've got four different things. Normally people say like, clubs spades, hearts, diamonds, say, oh, well, there is that, but there's actually these other ones as well. Mm-hmm. So you've got any card, which is any card in the deck, the chosen card, which someone selects, and then there's, like, the uh, the ambitious card, so you explain, normally you click your fingers, card jumps to the top, and then not so ambitious. So you show all them, and yeah. then you do the whole thing of, like, oh, the chosen card actually gets a bit cocky and flips itself over in the deck. Right. So that's that thing. And yeah, that's so like that is a great one story. One of the the first tricks that I sort of come up with with the story but then the stuff like the um, the four robbers yeah I remember I think we talked about that in the first podcast didn't we mm. about like what was one of the first tricks you learned yeah and that that's a story card trick isn't it do you know I tell you about some great story tr- uh, card tricks do you do you ever follow my, much by Joshua J Pits and Bobs yeah the the Trojan deck and yeah. the is it the Out of Sight I've got mm. is it outside deck I think um, the stories that he tells with them they're really good and that's you know they're a bit more than just a card tree because they're not about actually picking a card yeah you know the out of sight one 
yeah, he does find the card that they named, mm. but then it's so much more, and it's the same with the Trojan deck. It's like it's, the, um, so the Prism deck as well, where they're all different on the back. Prism deck. Uh, I'm not thinking of the clear ones. That's. I might. I, I might not be know that one, but I should. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but no, the the other one, the Trojan deck, that actually has. And thinking back, I haven't done it in a while, but thinking back. That has nothing to do with picking a card as well. Mm. So that's that's a card trick took in a completely different direction, isn't it? Yeah. Because he's never he, he never tells you to pick a card out of there. I don't think. Or you could do it this way. Mm. Um, and it's all about. I oh know there is a point in it where he does pick a card. I think. Yeah, there is. But you can do it without that bit. Mm. And it's all about obviously that you shuffle, they shuffle, um, and then the, the story that he has behind it about the two people meeting in the in the restaurant it all had to be at this moment yeah. and then if he cut once more he shuffled once more then everything would be different and it's all about the cards yeah, matching and stuff like that yeah. and I'm like thinking that's that's taking a card trick and actually just just going, the, going that bit further than just having someone select a card and then produce yeah. it right but then you, you would you, I've only performed that once at a wedding mm-hmm. um, and I think that's when I was just starting out I was taking a lot of gap decks <laughs> um but yeah, it's a hell say, of a trick. How, how did you find it? it? Was like trying to. Well, put that in a wedding. Yeah. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. I stick that out of this world, but it's a bit more manageable. <laughs> yeah. It took me. It took me a fair few years to find what my routine is, because um, I was taking so much to weddings. I was taking my whole close-up case. Yeah. Now I literally go with my right pocket. My jacket pocket has something like I think it has two decks in there. Mm-hmm. Um, what do I keep in here? I keep. A deck of cards, normal deck, um, an invisible deck. In this one, I keep blank cards, billets, mm-hmm. and celebrity smartass. And then in my back pocket, I keep an omni deck. Mm-hmm. And then I keep a lot of things up here. Like I'll keep my paddle, I'll keep my double cross, I'll keep my sharpie and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I might keep a packet trick or two in my top pocket. Yeah. And then if I've got some more space for something else, I'll keep. Um, I do a Luke Jamir stack deck trick mm-hmm. and I have two set up in this pocket because that's that's my one of my actually that is my favourite card trick of all time where yeah. you get three people that think of a different player can you spell it out each time Yeah. so I have two of them set up because that's like if I want to do a bit more for a table mm-hmm. or say it's a bit quiet and we've got a bit more time that could be a long card trick so I'll always have them because that's one of my favourites yeah. to do so I'll always do that one so I've got two of them in that middle pocket inside pocket and I've got socks in this one mm-hmm. and that's all I carry Yeah. as long as the, 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 my trouser pockets don't really keep anything in other than the Omni deck in the back mm. to be fair I could keep a, a trick wallet on me sometimes I swap my wallet out like from my everyday wallet mm. to um, I don't know like a card to wallet or something like that I might carry yeah. that if I want to do that but my whole routine that I can do is like 25 minutes half an hour if I wanted to do everything mm. um, with everything that I've got in my pockets and it took me a while to condense it down because yeah. as I say I used to take a whole close up case and have I don't know six or seven gaff decks on me, mm. and I just thought oh, I don't need this. It's a bit too long, yeah. um, and it, it, it requires his stuff requires a lot of listening as well, which I mm. think is it's a phenomenal trick if you're doing it parlor. Yeah, it's a great trick you can do parlor card trick wise. But with people who've had a couple of drinks, but yeah, people who have a couple of drinks, working it wise, like I don't think it's a, a working trick mm. to go do it weddings and parties and stuff like that. But yeah. to do it in your own show, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal trick. Mm. Especially when you've got everyone's attention and they're like listening oh, yeah. along. Yeah, you have to. Um, I did it once. Um, I did. I did it. No, it wasn't. A, it wasn't. That it was the Luke Jermaine one because I thought these people are listening. I mm. went to this pub once, and everyone was still having a drink. Yeah. But everyone was engaged in what I was saying. Normally, you get the few people that are sat over <laughs> there just having a conversation between themselves, or that guy's sitting on his phone. Yeah. The whole table was just focused in on what I was doing and there was about 10-15 people around me and I thought Jesus Christ so I thought this doesn't normally happen in the night because <laughs> I'm used to Empire yeah. um, so I thought you know what I'll do a little bit more for this table and I did I did it twice on two tables I used because I had them set up twice yeah. I did the thing and it just blew them away because it was just that little bit more than just a card trick because yes I was yeah. finding the card but it's if I can't remember the name of the trick and I'll find it out for next time but it was uh, by Luke Jermaine, I think it was on his Premise and Premonition DVD. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's where you give people six or seven or eight cards, they think of one of them, 
and then we put them back in the deck or they can actually shuffle all the cards put yeah. them back in the deck and then the cards just sit there and then we just spell them out and every single time your card comes out your card comes out your card comes out right. and I think it's a hell of a good trick have you ever seen it? No. I'll show you that it's my favourite one of my favourite tricks I just thought another one with when you said about that and the, the card trick which is just a card trick mm. is the one where you give a certain amount of cards could be anything to different people and then they have to rip them Oh and yeah. then rip them again and you then get you four cards like, and you rip it and then you put some at the back and then yeah. you throw one over your shoulder yeah that's and then that's like they end up with the, the cards so they, they're doing then. the trick themselves then aren't they yeah that's quite good I know Tom did it in his show didn't he I don't know but I know Andy oh, yeah, Lamas does it yeah it's a lot of cards to go through yeah. but yeah it's just <laughs> it's like they're doing the card trick isn't it because <laughs> as, as long as they, they'll match the pieces at the end won't they yeah and then it'll be the same one as the sat on but it's always funny it's like I've seen it done quite a few times and there's a lot of times there's always one person who doesn't listen and then they have completely different cards <laughs> it's like yeah. you'd always tell there's one person who didn't listen yeah <laughs> I, I think I, the, I saw it on a, a video once and it was you know Dan White there's a lot of stuff yeah, on yeah. Jimmy Fallon I watched a video of him doing it once and he said in the, in the beginning of the video right, he said if this doesn't work for you at the end this just shows how much you listen and stuff like that so he says it before it even starts he's like if you don't listen to me this is not going to work for you so yeah he says it just before he just insults them yeah. all before he even starts it's quite good I'm trying to think what else I'll tell you what else isn't a, a, a card trick but it is a card trick um, it was on my Instagram for ages and I think again Dan White did it that's why it came in my head um, it's about you know, they take out the cards and you take out the cards and we turn them over and we mix them all in together and then we flip them and we cut the deck and then we... T so yeah. basically we've got some face up, some face down. Yeah. And then as we spread through them, on my Instagram, there's like a prediction. Mm -hmm. So it says 22 cards will be face up. Uh, out of them 22 cards, there'll oh, be so many red and 18 so many black and red and then yeah. seven of them will be hearts and then blah, blah, blah. So that's a good card trick. But you're not, again, you're not picking a card. So that's yeah. a little bit more than just a card trick. But at the end of the day, it's still a card trick. Yeah, because it's, isn't it, you give the spectator a pack to shuffle and then like it's done that way? Yeah. Because I remember... remember I'd, I'd have those. to look at it again, but yeah, it's, it's something like that. It's like they can, they cut the deck somewhere, turn it over, shuffle them in, then they can cut it. Yeah, I think the one I've seen is like, there's a written prediction. It's like the only card that as a diamond will be an odd card or an even card mm -hmm. and then all the other ones are like completely different and stuff yeah like so many odd yeah um, so many red so many black whatever and then I think on the last one I say all the cards will be number cards mm -hmm. and then they count them all down I think there's like king of hearts left and then I, one more slide on my Instagram and it says oh except for the <laughs> king of hearts so. yeah so it is, it is a card trick at the end of the day yeah but it's something a bit different isn't it it is it's, very different again it's not getting it's not getting someone to, to pick, pick a card. Yeah. Yeah. But then, I don't know, if you're not a magician and watching this, you know, let us know, like, do you do you think, do you, I don't know, do you think that a card trick is just, if, if I say, oh, what's a card trick to you? Would you just think it's just picking a card and most finding it? Or do you ever think of the other other things that you might have seen online and stuff like that that using ca uses cards but yeah. it's not exactly the picking a card finding a card sort of thing mm. yeah be interesting to uh, hear your thoughts so remember to leave a comment mm -hmm. what's your final thoughts my final thoughts is that if you're doing a trick with playing cards it's just a card trick <laughs> it but is you can take a card trick and use something completely different and then it's not a card trick. Yeah. Get Leviosa, that's my final <laughs> thought, to be fair. You know, it's still a card trick, but it's a really good card trick. I'll get some ESP cards. ESP cards, yeah, that's... Because you can do card tricks, but it's not a card trick. And then it's not at the same cards. time. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. again, probably not a very long one, <laughs> but... Full of insightful, hopefully. Full of insight, and we haven't shut the hook up. Yeah. So and then we'll uh, copy off bottom of the barrel, po bottom of the barrel podcast, and tell three friends. Tell three friends. Yeah, tell Is three friends about the podcast. Tell three friends. <laughs> See you. Until later. next time. See ya. Bye.